What the hell is first past the post? I got this question from someone off Twitter. First past the post. Many think they are voting for the prime minister or premier directly. Well, you're not. It's a first past the post system. Now, where did that expression come from? British horse racing. When horses used to run races in Britain, there was a post at the finish line. And when the horses came around the track and passed the finish line, the first horse passed the post won. It didn't matter if that horse won by a nose or if that horse won by a thousand meters. The first horse passed the post wins. And our electoral system here in the province of Ontario is exactly the same way. It doesn't matter if you win by one vote or 10,000 votes, you still win. And it's winner take all. That means you get the seat. You get to go to Queen's Park and represent that constituency. Some people don't think this is a great way to elect people. After all, if you win with 40% of the votes, that means 60% of the people voted against you. That means more people didn't want you in than did want you in. So why would we elect to Queen's Park somebody who actually didn't have the majority of the votes of the people who voted? Well, of course, the answer is first past the post. The person with the most votes wins, and if more people voted against you than for you, it doesn't matter if their votes are scattered across many different candidates. Our system is very different from the United States. For example, in the state of New York, Everybody who lives in the state of New York is allowed to vote for the governor. But in the province of Ontario, not everybody can vote for the premier. The premier is just going to be an MPP like everybody else. And that candidate has to seek election in just one constituency. Of course, whoever wins the most seats gets the chance to form a government. And if they do form that government, that person becomes the premier. The premier has a lot of power. Does it make sense to give someone that much power without directly electing them? Well, that's an interesting question, Daniel. I guess it depends. Uh, the reality is this is our system that we've used for 155 years. And the power of the Premier of Ontario is actually in some respects more than the power of the Governor of New York. Uh, our Premiers have a great deal of power to make massive appointments and basically to have whatever they want to take place in the legislature take place. Governors, of course, have to deal with an assembly. And whatever program they want to get through, they have to get through both the House and the Senate of that state. It doesn't work that way in Ontario. Premier of Ontario, if he wants something to happen and he's got a majority government, he can just make it happen. Does it make sense to have that much power vested in one person who doesn't seek province-wide election? Well, here's the other reality. Even though the Premier only seeks election in one riding, the fact is, most people cast their ballot based on who the leaders are and based on the parties they represent. The person who's actually running in your constituency, surveys have showed that that might make up five percentage points of the total votes cast. Overwhelmingly, people are voting for the leader, the party, and the platform. And the actual candidate in your riding is rather insignificant, I hate to say, to the overall choice. So when you ask very few people actually vote directly for the premier, that's true technically speaking, but actually probably pretty much everyone is. If you have any other burning questions about things in Ontario politics or Canadian politics for that matter, send me a tweet. I'm at S. Paikin. That's S-P-A-I-K-I-N.